Good evening, everybody. Uh, on this Sunday evening, we're going to continue Eleanor. This is one of my... where I don't commentate, because it doesn't need the commentation. Or anything. So, y'all enjoy the soothing sounds of the 19th. You like the fight game, Phelps? I did a little boxing in the Marines. I found it a pretty humbling experience. Make you a sandwich, buddy. Corned beef and egg salad, 12 cents. Bologna and ham and cheese, 10. It's strictly a mugs game. You'll like this fight, though. A plucky lime is about to take a beating from an up-and-coming Negro. You sound pretty sure about the result. I ought to be. I got 50 bucks on the black kid. Let's get a ringside seat. Son of a bitch Hammond made a run for his dressing room. Let's find out what's going on. God damn you, Alpha! You get out here right now! Step back! LAPD! What's going on? That son of a bitch Hammond has jammed the door. And who are you? Carlo Arcaro. I'm his manager. I'm his trainer. Interesting attitude to have towards a victorious athlete. Victorious? We had an arrangement. We had a goddamn arrangement! That limey bastard was paid to take a nap. He reneged. And you were out of pocket? Damn right. Me and a couple hundred other people. Stand aside. He squeezed out the window. I'll put an APB out on him. Why would we do that? He won the fight fair and square. To prevent him from getting clipped. He was paid to flop. There was big money riding on this fight. So are fight. we here because you lost money or because we're investigating a prize fighting racket? Very funny. Look around and see what you can find. Which is Hammond's locker? Over by the pinboard, second from the end. There's a phone number we can run by R and I. Plus a bunch of names and odds. You're not the only one who likes to flutter, Roy. You look troubled. I'm in a jam, doctor. Can I help, Courtney? Is it money? No, no, doctor. That's okay. Do I have your professional confidence? Whatever you say, we'll never leave this room. I talked some of the guys in my old unit into doing something, and it's gone wrong. I guess I did it for the wrong reasons, for short-term gain. We came home from China 
on the cool bridge. The morphine robbery. That was us. I thought I could get the guys a fair share. Some sort of benefit for the sacrifices that they made in the war. Those guys deserve it, Doctor. Oh, I'm sure they do, Courtney. But the deserving aren't always rewarded. Tell me about it, Doc. Uh, we shifted our stuff onto this mob-connected guy, and it's been turning up all over town. It wasn't meant to be like this. The presumption was rather naive, Courtney. I know that now, Doctor. But people are dying. Hmm. Might I venture a few questions? Sure. Do your underworld contacts have all the morphine? No, they don't. We doled it out, hoping we could control it. Are they pressing you for further allocation? That's the polite way of putting it, Doctor. I may be able to help you, Courtney. Thanks, Doc. It helps just to talk about it. I mean, I have a solution that will help you financially and salve your conscience. I'm all ears, Doctor. I will transact to take all the narcotic off your hands. And you can rest assured that it will all be medically administered. I will use the funds that I no longer require for the purchase of medication and invest them in housing developments. Housing? The developments in question are housing projects for former servicemen. Your return will come from the sale of the properties and your investment will benefit those that you care for most. Does this arrangement meet with your approval? You're a magician, Doctor. You better find that cocksucker and you bring him to me. I feel bad too, Mickey. He guaranteed me he would take the flop. I guarantee that you will be fish food if you don't bring me... Roy, you out of pocket too? Mickey, seems that way. Don't worry about it. My boys are out looking for him. Well, you'd better call them off. This is a police matter now. If anything happens to Hammond, I'll testify that you made threats against him. Who's the Greyhound? He's a frisky one, isn't he? Cole Phelps? Mickey Cohen. I know who he is, Roy. I, uh, met his brother-in-law. I think you had the mixture pretty scared back there. Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for the following phone number, AL345. The address for the phone number is the Hotel El Mar, 6294 Leland Way, Hollywood. Thanks. You know the place? Flop house. Quarter a night, no questions asked. You can drive. Do we know where we're going? You seem to have a pretty cozy relationship with Cohen and Stampanato. Do I note a hint of reprimand in your tone, detective? Talking to gangsters comes with the turf. You should try out Mickey's place. He's got a haberdasher's up on Sunset. See if he can get you out of those old man's clothes that you slink around in. It's a front for his illegal activities. It is that, but he does carry some very sharp suits. If it's okay with you, I'll stick with Brooks Brothers.
Yeah, what do you want? LAPD. We're making inquiries into the whereabouts of an Albert Hammond. No one here by that name. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. This isn't the sort of place where people use their real names. Take a look at the register if you don't believe me. See him? I saw his picture in the paper. He worked that case with a lady that was cut up like the dollar. Okay, so look for prominent Tommies. That should narrow it down. Son, you're a couple of slates short of a full roof. Winston Churchill. A very patriotic Englishman is staying in room 207. The old bulldog. Even at a flop house, Adley can't get out from his shadow. Is somebody gonna tell us what the hell's going on? Door's unlocked. Looks like he's had a broad up here. He must be heading home. You know, I hope he makes it. That crooked son of a bitch, no chance. I guess a fighter has plenty of time on his hands between bouts. Does Albert have somebody special? I didn't see anyone in his corner at the fight. Instaheat. Adrian Black's product of choice. Seems like a lifetime ago. Candy has expensive taste. Albert has his work cut out for him. Who's Candy? Candy Edwards, the lady who filled out this coupon. All right, let's go after his girl, see if that gets us any closer. Looks like Albert has been doing some homework. 11 grand would be a nice little nest egg. Let's go after his girl. Another See window exit. Gets us any closer. Must have just missed him. Hey, there's such a thing as soap, you know. Watch it. Well, you don't see that every day. That's that guy from the papers. Stop that big thing. You know the way. You can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? So, you boxed in the Marines? We all did. Standard training. I can't imagine you ever played dirty. The only prize for taking a fall was a thousand push-ups. We need to know which room is Candy's. Real happy this is when you marry a girl for love. LAPD, ma'am. We're looking for Candy Edwards. Apartment 7. You take the outside stairs by the parking lot and turn left at the top. You friends of the Italian guy? Italian guy? Yeah. Sleazy type. Gave his name as Carlo. I didn't like the look of him, but Candy has some funny friends. Thanks. This candy broad must be as sweet as she sounds. All these gentlemen callers.
Keep it up. Sounds like we're missing all he's the gone fun. And Get in there, Phelps. You know where he's hiding. Now tell me where he is before I cut you. I told. <laughs> like hitting women, do you? We had a gun. This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Like hitting women. This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Like hitting women. This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Like hitting women, do you? We had a goddamn This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. <laughs> like hitting women, do you? We had a goddamn This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Like hitting women, do you? This isn't gonna end well for you, friend. Out cold, but breathing. Give her a minute and take a look around. Carlo here seems to have the same friends as Hammond. What are the odds on them all being bookmakers? Single ticket, one way. I guess there isn't a lot for Albert in Ohio. Scania sails from New York. Nasty weapon. All the Italians carry them. A real man uses his fists or a gun. Take a seat, Miss Edwards. We have some questions for you to answer. Look, I haven't done anything wrong. Ever? I find that pretty hard to believe. Can you answer some questions now, Miss Edwards? Sure, I've had worse. I'll shake it off. We're trying to track down Albert Hammond. We have reason to believe he might be in danger. Do you know where he is? No, I don't. I'm over Albert. I haven't seen him. You're lying, Candy. You were in his hotel room. He came back after the fight and you weren't there. What happened? You can't prove that I was in the room. How do you think we found you, Candy? You wrote your name and address on a coupon. Look, Albert was supposed to take a fall. We were all supposed to make a little money out of it. But Albert got too goddamn stubborn. Said his pride was all he had left. So I told him, shove it. Let's see his pride keep him warm at night. So you walked out before the fight? Yes, I did. What's the problem? I didn't take anything. Do the names Harry, Mervyn, or Ray mean anything to you? 
Could be anybody. How the hell would I know? They're bookmakers, aren't they? Tell me the truth. How the hell would I know? Albert wrote his winnings down on a notepad in the hotel room. We found the odds in his locker. Who has the betting slips? That son of a bitch, Albert. Everyone thought he was dumb, including me. But he beat them all. You're leaving town, Miss Edwards? Yes, I'm going straight home. Albert is going home by boat as soon as he collects his winnings. I know you're going to meet him. Albert is going to collect nothing. He'll be lucky if he can get out of town in one piece. How will you fare any better? They already believe you're in on it. Hell, I know you're in on it. You can think what you want, Buster. I'll take my chances. I got a few errands to run, and then I say adios to this dump. Do you want to press charges against Arcaro? Just get him out of here. That's all I want. Get out, Carlo, you hump. And get rid of that pig sticker. You ever pull that thing on me, I'll shoot you like a dog. That bitch knows where Hammond is. She knows where my money's gone. My money too, tough guy. I'll handle this. Good luck, Miss Edwards. I hope things work out for you. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say so. Bad people are looking to hurt Candy, and yet she's not heading straight for the train station? I smell a payoff. I say stake her out, see where she goes. Tail is broad. Don't let her get away, but don't get spotted. I'll bring up the car behind you. Too much slack. Gotta get closer. Move in. Can't risk losing the trail. Too much slack. Gotta get closer. Risk losing the trail.
Too much slack. Gotta get closer. Risk losing the trail. Too much slack. Gotta get closer. Bookmakers? Yes. Surprise, surprise. Hey, Cole, not in public, huh? A blonde woman just came in here. She went out the back way. Said she was being watched. How much did she collect? $3,600. She claimed me out. On the Hammond Kid Galahad fight? You got it. I'm not complaining. We all made a lot of money on that one. Huge plunge on Galahad, and then Hammond knocks the bum out. So she collected the money and went out through the back door? Nope. She made a phone call over there, wrote something on a notepad, and then left. What are you doing? An old intelligence trick from the Marines. We know where she's headed. Let's get moving. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. All right, where to? operating out of storefronts in the Hollywood area. Thrifty Liquor, 6106 Santa Monica, the Examiner for Drugstore, and a Max Turrets at 1658 North Cherokee. KGP all clear. Detectives Phelps and Earl, LAPD. Relax, Cole. You just have a blonde in here, Mervyn? Sure did. I'm just about to close up. She took me to the cleaners. 4,000 clams and change. How long ago did you leave? Maybe five minutes. Called the cab. Asked for a number. I told her there was a car over there by the phone.
Yellow cab. We need to get after her. Fast. Can you connect me to the Yellow Cab Company? Hollywood 2187, please. This is Detective Phelps, LAPD. You dispatched a cab to 1487 Ivar Avenue, Hollywood? Yes, sir. Send one round from the pool. Do you have the number of that cab? Number 179. Thanks. We're done playing around. Get Mervyn to give us an address on Ray's place. You're behind the wheel. Where are we going? idea who Ray is? Sugar Ray. Not now, Mervyn. Cole doesn't have much of a sense of humor at the best of times. Ray runs a shop up on North Cherokee Avenue, just south of Hollywood Boulevard. Can you drive to this one? All right, where to? and backed himself to win. And Candy is picking up the winnings. Smart play. Question is, is Candy collecting on Albert's behalf or is she cheating him too? waiting up ahead. She's not in the car. Don't get too close. She must be inside. We're on the move again, Cole. After her. Don't lose that cab. Hammond is over the hill. He's a punching bag for the up-and-comers. She knows his goddamn place. I think he knows. I think he worked out the place isn't L.A. He's punchy. His brain's going to mush. Winston Churchill? Give me a break. Churchill is a fighter, Roy. Hammond didn't just scribble down the first name he could think of. Can you quit driving like a jackass already? Hammond is full of himself, being this sure he was going to win. Careful, we'll get spotted at this distance. That bitch has given me what I'm owed. That's all I know. God damn it. Everyone's looking at us, Cole.
Pull over. She's heading inside. I think I just saw Hammond. I'll tail him. You get in there and stay with Candy. Make sure you don't let her see you. Does the chicken come with fried tomatoes? I gotta have it. Hey, buddy, you drop something? Hey, isn't that the cop who solved the big case and got promoted? Roy! Call an ambulance. Hammond got away. <laughs> Try and sit still, Candy. Make Who shot you? Was it Albert? Car. They're on the way. I have a patrolman searching the depot. The chief's putting together a manhunt for Hammond. He got the money, right? Looks like it. A tough bird, our limey friend. Using his girlfriend as the bag woman and then getting greedy over the split. He won't make it out of town. That's how you see it? I told you that cocksucker was a crook. Thirty two caliber, one shot fired. Egyptian theater. So what now? The theater, I guess. We don't have much else to go on. You're behind the wheel. Fine, where are we headed? Isn't that the cop who caught the guy that was pretending to be dead? Poor girl. She didn't deserve that. Poor girl. Half the precinct aren't taking a vacation this year because of her. You need to leave town a lot quicker than that if you decide to screw over Mickey C. This seems like a long shot. Aren't they all? Car 11 King, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King. Message from the coroner. The cause of death was a knife wound. Repeat, a knife wound. The revolver appears to have belonged to the victim. KGB Son of a bitch. He stabbed her. I thought you said real men use their fists, not guns. That guinea cocksucker. You think he got the money too? Come on, Roy. We're bringing this whole tragedy to its conclusion. Why'd you kill her, Carlo? Your gripe was with me. She was collecting the money for you. Mickey made it clear it was either me or you, and, and I intend to keep on living. 
She stole those betting slips. She was running out on me. And you were going to let her? No, I let her collect. I set her up just like she set me up. Just like my manager set me up. Everyone wanted me to take a dive. Everyone wanted me to take the short money. It's for the best, kid. You were washed up, kid. You couldn't climb and you were too brave to sink. You were going nowhere. Maybe, but I had heart. I was a Royal Marine, Carlo. If I lost a fight, it wasn't for lack of trying. And it wasn't for lack of courage. I didn't have much, but I had that. I did it for you, and that's how you repay me! You did it for yourself, so did little boy. You did it and make a quick buck, and Candy did it and make her dream come true. Blah, blah, blah! I've got the money, all I need to do is get rid of you. It's gonna be a shame, kid, but that's business. We've heard enough, Arcaro. Put down your weapon. You're making a big mistake, Arcaro. Move, I've got you. Come on, Cole. Carlo's a dead man. Hammond, too, when I find him. Throw out the guns. We've heard enough, Arcaro. Put down your weapon. You're making a big mistake, Arcaro. Come on, Cole. Carlo's a dead man. Hammond, too, when I find him. Throw out the guns. some cover! You're covered, Phelps! We've heard enough, Arcaro. Put down your weapon. You're making a big mistake, Arcaro. Ah! 
Throw out the guns. Come on, Cole. Carlo's a dead man. Hammond, too, when I find him. Where are you? You limey cocksucker. Time to come out now, Hammond. Put the gun down, Roy. That son of a bitch owes me a lot of money. Catch. Escania sails from New York, Hammond. Be on the next train and don't ever come back. Why? Because I was a Marine and I once lacked courage. Everyone deserves a second chance. Now beat it. you. That English prick is getting away with my money, Phelps. Donnelly and the Homicide Squad send their best, Phelps. They're more than pleased that you wrapped up the Edwards killing. They're a little mystified about the motive. You have any ideas on that? Uh, crime of passion, sir. Uh, looks like some sort of love triangle between the manager, the fighter, and the uh, his girlfriend. No sign of the scrapper? No, sir. Looks like he left town after the fight. Okay. It's homicide's problem now. Good work, gentlemen. One eighty-seven at fifty-eight ten Murata Avenue. Homicide wants you over there. The coroner thinks the broad was whacked using the army morphine. Don't say anything, Roy. Just get over there. What's with that getup of yours, anyway? I should start introducing us as Detective Earl. And this is my science teacher, Mr. Phelps. Your interest in my appearance is starting to get me worrying. Like it or not, we're a dysfunctional couple now. People judge me with you on my arm the same way they would a fat broad with a five o'clock shadow. I really hope you're joking, Roy. Do you think this lipstick's too light for my complexion? You can drive. Seem distracted. We recovered the morphine. Some of it might be unaccounted for. So what? That's life. We did our job. Closing one case opens another. Do you have any idea what is really going on while we're wasting our time following this stuff? Are you going to tell me? The deals being done right now will change the face of L.A. forever, and we're wasting our time on some hump. Someone's little girl. Visit the morgue at the end of the month when the John and Jane Doe's are cremated. Their percentages. The odds for and against lightning striking.
Second floor, apartment six, in the back. Thanks. Mal will be pleased. Well, that's hardly conclusive, given the number of those things we've come across recently. The autopsy will confirm it one way or another. Maybe if... No. Bukowski, you made homicide. That I did. Good to see you, Phelps. You two want a hug? Or can we get on with it? Relax, Rusty. 26 years old, fashion model. Found in the tub by the cleaning lady, Mrs. Reynoldson. She called it in. We heard Carruthers thinks... Carruthers likes to make work for people. Overdose of sleeping pills. Falls asleep in the tub, rest in peace. Case closed. Here, here. Mal is 100% that it's murder. Do you mind if I take a look around? Sure. Go right ahead. This is all top end of town stuff. Gives us somewhere to look. Could have been a modeling assignment. Beautiful girl. Her clothes certainly aren't from the Sears catalog. It's place to start. Phelps? Mal, we've had a look around. Rusty thinks it's a waste of time. What's your theory? Come on, Mal. Tell us why we were dragged down here. If the victim was alive when she entered the tub, water would have entered her lungs. The water is violently churned in the windpipe as she drowns. The result is that a lot of foam is generated. This foam is found at the mouth and nostrils in almost all cases of real drowning. Notice anything about our Vic? May I take a look? Be my guest. Take a closer look at her head and neck. Her neck is bruised pretty badly. Bruising on the forearms, and these look like bite marks. Very good. A very unusual ring. I could be wrong, but it looks like a black sapphire. The eyes are a classic sign of morphine, and the bruises tell their own story. I think one man held her down, and another held her arm and injected her. They put her in the bath to try to cover it as a drowning. And spread a trail of barbiturates. Take a look around outside on your way out and see if you can find the serrets. It would make my theory. And morphine would have been very quick, and there wouldn't have been much of a struggle. Okay, so find two guys who recently bought serrets and weren't junkies, and you might be onto something. The 
quality English smoking jacket. I don't know anyone under 45 who would wear one. Looks like barbiturates. Barbiturates. What else is rattling around in this thing? We should speak to a doctor. Prescribing both drugs would make her life a roller coaster. We got things to do. I'm Detective Phelps. I'm here to try and help Julia. Do you mind answering some questions? Virginia Reynoldson, I'm just so shocked. I feel like there's something I should be doing, someone I should call. We can make those calls, ma'am. Who needs to be notified? That's just it. I don't know. Miss Julie doesn't have any family in town. Someone has to set her affairs in order. Um, Mr. Henderson, maybe? I what else is there? I, I don't know. If you give the details to the other detectives, ma'am, they can try and get in contact. Was Miss Randall depressed about something? Upset? No more than normal. What are you hiding here, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julie was obviously disturbed about something. I have no idea what you're talking about. She was taking barbiturates. She couldn't sleep. You must have seen them in her room. You've seen the pillbox, the thing she hid in there. I don't know how she supported herself. Always new clothes and jewelry. She lived like a movie star, a princess. Does modeling really pay that well? Did Miss Randall have many friends visit? I'm not sure. I only come around twice a week. Why are you lying to me, Mrs. Reynoldson? Julia had men stay here. I will not speak ill of the dead. You can't prove that. Who owns the smoking jacket? I wouldn't like to tell tales, you understand. That's Mr. Henderson's. An older man, very distinguished looking. He seemed very much in love with her. Where would we find him? I'm sorry. I, I don't know. He said he lives in San Francisco. What was it like working for Miss Randall? 
perfectly fine, officer. Mrs. Reynoldson, it seems like there's something you want to tell me. She was very high strung. Lovely one moment and screaming at you the next. She wanted it all and she wanted it damn quick. Of course, being so beautiful, it seemed like she was going to get it. Not the way it's turned out, though, is it? Thanks, Mrs. Reynoldson. You've been very helpful. One of the other detectives will take your statement and then you can go home. I think our work is done here. What do you think? Our doctor was prescribing enough pills to stop a horse. Maybe we should... Stefan Rusty, we'll take a look around outside and then follow up these leads. Can you get some guys to run down the jacket? You think Carruthers has called it right? He rarely gets it wrong. I don't know. I'm a Galloway. I've met enough girls in my time who can't handle their dope. You know the way. You can drive. Do we know where we're going? Bukowski, Galloway, quite the little reunion in there. Almost brought a tear to my eye. They're good police. How would you know? You got promoted so fast you barely had time to learn their names. Let me fill you in. Bukowski's a pushover. Galloway's a drunk. You could learn a thing or two from both of them. Please. They couldn't work a vice case if their life depended on it. I don't see why they'd be any better or worse at it than me. I noticed you said better. Hubris disguised as humility. Kind of your trademark, don't you think? Why do you always twist everything? Galloway's got nothing to prove. He's been on homicide for years. And he's welcome to it. You're a terrier, Phelps, and that's what I need. Not some old bulldog who can't get up a flight of stairs without coughing up his lunch. Here, Stoneman, Office 505. I swear, if we lock up every doctor in this town, Vice would be able to work half days. Your name? LAPD. We'd like to see Dr. Stoneman. Dr. Stoneman is with a patient. Would you like to wait? No, we wouldn't. Tell him we want to see him now. There's no need to be rude. Save it, sister. Dr. Stoneman, I have some gentlemen from the LAPD here to see you. Um, send them in, please. I'll, uh, I'll see this patient again after they've left. Your investigation is much more important than my sciatica. I'm just in pain. Dr. Stoneman, 
We are investigating the death of one of your patients, Julia Randall. I'm very sorry to hear that. Do you mind if we ask you some questions about Ms. Randall? Uh, um, not if it doesn't compromise doctor-patient privilege, detective. How well did you know Ms. Randall? Fairly at all. Um, she'd only been a patient six months or so. Julia Randall has been your patient for nearly a year. I'm sure you know that. Do you doubt my veracity, detective? Do you have access to my patient records? Your prescriptions contradict you, doctor. Miss Randall was in the fashion business, as you probably know. She was jumped up on Benzedrine by day and knocked down by sleeping pills at night. I, I told her to slow up, but no. Life was too short for her. And you supplied the prescription for the Benzedrine. It's not illegal, detective. A lot of young women in her line of work use it for weight loss. You wrote Julia Randall a prescription for Benzedrine. How can you account for that? Miss Randall was in the uh, fashion business. She wanted to control her weight. Benzedrine is addictive, as I'm sure you know, doctor. As I warned her, but she was determined. She said she needed it to control her appetite. Sounds like you knew her pretty well. I knew the line of work she was involved in. That'll be all for now, Dr. Stoneman. We'll be in touch. About what? I don't know. He looked relieved when you said she was dead. That's a strange reaction to have to the death of a young patient. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Where are we going? Have you noticed how croakers only pull out the physician-patient privilege card when they got some to hide? There are certain things people have a right to keep private. Until it gets in the way of police work. And it's only private when it suits them. A couple of drinks and every doctor I've met will spill your darkest secrets in a heartbeat. Well, hello. Throw my head away. What can I help you with today? LAPD, ma'am. I hope I haven't done anything wrong. No, ma'am. We're making some inquiries about Julia Randall. Does she work here? No, I had to let her go. Is she in some sort of trouble? She was found dead this morning. How long had Julia worked as a model? Well, she worked in New York before coming here. She was a very beautiful girl. Could you tell us why you let Miss Randall go? Husbands sometimes come in here with their wives. When Julia Randall modeled, the husbands were often more interested in her than they were their wives' dresses. The wives weren't happy and neither was I. Did she have any close friends here? Actually, yes, Heather Swanson. Would you like to speak with her? I'd like that very much. Please don't inform her about Miss Randall's death. Very well, officer. Heather, these gentlemen are from the LAPD. I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. I understand that you worked with Julia Randall, Miss Swanson? Yes. Julia helped me get my job here. She's not in any kind of trouble, is She's she? She's a hellraiser, isn't she? 
Lives a fast life. Oh, no. Maybe Mrs. Stanley would call her that, but I wouldn't. She's full of life, full of wonderful company. That's a lovely engagement ring. Do you like it? Henry gave it to I'm me. I'm very interested in engagement rings. Do you mind if I take a closer look? That's some pearl, Miss Swanson. Would have cost Henry a fortune. He must really love you. How did you meet Julia? I was introduced through my fiance, Henry Arnett. Henry is your beau. Tell us about it. Yes, he is. Henry has a fashion business. He and Julia have been friends for years. Are Miss Randall and Mr. Henderson engaged? Who's he? She was wearing a sapphire engagement ring. Someone must have given it to her. She never mentioned a man named Henderson to me. That's all for now, Miss Swanson. Could you ask your fiancé to visit Hollywood Police Station? It would be very helpful to our inquiry. Now, wait a moment. I don't think I'll pass on that message until you tell me why you're asking all these questions. Julia Randall was found dead this morning. What? Oh, oh no. Oh, I can't believe it. She was so full of life. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How could I help, Detective? Messages, please. Yes, Detective. The coroner's been asking to speak to you. I can connect the call if you like. Please, thank you. Al? Cole, can you get over here? I just finished the autopsy. Sure thing, Mal. We'll be right over. Can you drive to this one? All right, where to? Nice move, not telling old Sweet Lips in there about her friend taking the big jump till we were half out the door. Very slick. I figured we'd get more out of her that way. You're learning, Phelps. We'll make a vice cop out of you yet. Calling you stupid? Cole, Roy, I have some information for you. You're the only person enjoying this, Mal. Get on with it. The bruising confirms two sets of hands, so we have two killers. Death was caused by heart failure due to an overdose of morphine. Have you dragged us down here to gloat? We already heard your theory. We agree that she was murdered. Yes, of course. I have something else to show you. All right, Mal, what gives? The dead guy's name is Jimmy LeBlanc, career burglar. He came in this morning. Someone stove his head in with a lump of two-by-four. So what? Good riddance. I found two surrettes in his jacket pocket. Wow. Hang on a minute, Roy. We're listening, Matt. No sign of morphine use and no metabolized morphine in his blood. Scratch marks on his face. Which could be from getting his head remodeled. Time of death, Mal. Maybe an hour or two after the Randall girl. So you're saying Laughing Boy here could be one of our killers? That's a hell of a long shot. Thanks, Mal. We'll check it out. I found something else. Sorry, I don't play. I don't know if it's significant. His wallet was empty. The only other things he was carrying were the harmonica and the morphine. Carruthers. Yeah, he's here. I'll send him over. They have a guy called Henry Arnett in interview two for you next door. Let me know how you get on. Sure, Mal. 
And thanks for the lead. Sure, Mal, thanks for the lead. Bronco, can you give me a hand? I got a hard Mr. Arnett, I'm Detective Phelps. This is Detective Earl. Thanks for coming in. Call me Henry. It's the least I could do. Terrible news about Julia. How well did you know Julia Randall? Vaguely. I'm in the clothing business, and Julia occasionally modeled for me. He's asking whether you banged her in a chuck-on-the-shoulder fraternity kind of way. I'm engaged to be married. It wouldn't be polite. Answer the question. This will remain private. Heather won't have to know. <sighs> yes. We had relations. Miss Randall's landlady said she was seeing an older man. Could have been. I wasn't privy to all the details of Julia's private life. Henry, I don't like when people lie to me. She was seeing a man named Henderson. You know who I'm talking about. Easy on, detective. I may have heard of Henderson, but I don't know his full name. I think he's from New York or someplace back east. That's funny. Julia told her cleaning lady that he lived in San Francisco. OK, you got me. I don't know where he's from. Julia wanted money. She always wanted money. She thought she could get something from this guy. She was wearing a distinctive engagement ring. You think she might have convinced him to buy it for her? Maybe he did, yeah. Maybe he and Julia were getting serious. <laughs> Ever heard of a Jimmy LeBlanc? No. Should I have? Is, is he an entertainer or something? So you wouldn't have any reason to believe that LeBlanc would be involved in Julie Randall's murder? If this guy is a criminal, he, he might have been involved. But like I said, I've never heard of this LeBlanc character. Heather told us that you were in fashion. That's right. I didn't want to arrest the kid, so I gave him a dusty. Yeah. Some kind of traveling salesman? Once I got out of the Corps, I used my... You were in the Marines? Sure. I'm proud of it. The Fighting Sixth. You were in the Sixth Marines? Yes. I was a captain. Which company? Uh, various companies. We had a lot of casualties. Which engagements? Okinawa. A couple of other places. That will be all for now, Henry. You've been very helpful. That son of a bitch was never in the Marines. Why'd you let him off the hook? Because we're giving him a couple of minutes before we start tailing him. Arnett is an amateur. We need to find out who killed the girl. Can you pass this on to Bukowski? Have him check the place out and go through his records. Sure, I'll pass it on. Thanks. Can you also have R and I run the records on a Jimmy LeBlanc and find out who was his last arresting officer? Have them get in touch via KGPL when they have some information. He's in that car at the lights. He was squirming like a worm in there. Don't you love it when they pull the war hero excuse? Actually, maybe you don't. Now would be a bad time. I'd have expected a cad like Arnett to be a better liar.
Where are you taking us, Henry? You got a pretty funny idea of what keeping a low profile means, Phelps. That idiot never stepped foot in Okinawa. It's money and fast. Get in there and find out what he pawned. I'll stick with him, see how he intends to spend the money. Move in. Can't risk losing the trail. Puff it, Phelps. I'll bring the car around when I'm done here. Too much slack. Gotta get closer. That's right, Mexico City. One-way ticket, please. Next available seat. That would be one day from now. Is that okay? It's going to have to be. LAPD, the man who just came in here, he bought a ticket? Yes, sir, to Mexico City, tomorrow night. If you hear from him again, don't mention this conversation. What have you got? He bought a ticket for Mexico City tomorrow night. That's good, but this is better. Oh my God, it's Fabergé. Should have seen the look on the pawnbroker's face when I told him to hand it over. The guy who owned the joint thought it was worth at least 10 large for a cigarette case. Arnett only got 600 clams. You're behind the wheel. Fine, where are we headed? Car 11K, 11 King, come in. Good. 
Go ahead, KGPL. 11K, go to Hollywood Station. Homicide detectives Bukowski and Galloway have information relating to the Randall case. Roger, KGPL. 11K, on route. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11 King, go ahead. R&I reports the last arresting officer for DOA, Jimmy LeBlanc, was patrolman Fred Wallace, who's working a shift on Hollywood 9th Beat, Sunset Boulevard, between Gordon and Wilcox. Car 11K, on route. Sir, I need the contraband list. Item stolen over the last year. Hang on, I'll dig out a copy for you. Here you go. Thanks. Is the cigarette case on there? It's here. Arnett must be out of his mind trying to move this while under a murder cloud. Even the engagement ring was purloined. Our net is a cad. Seems Julia wasn't the first board society girl to hide her bennies in that pillbox. Julia Randall's ring. It's here. You can drive. All right, where to? Give him a hand. Right behind you, Wallace. Detective Phelps. Wallace, go left. I'm going right after this little prick in the alley. and desist. Find some cover! Thanks. Outstanding warrant, armed robbery. Knocked over a drugstore back there, and it looks like he brought his whole posse with him. Bad luck for them. They're all yours now. Need some information. Ever heard of a burglar goes by the name of Jimmy LeBlanc? Sure. I nabbed Jimmy on a burglary beef a couple of years back. 
They cut through a music shop and into a jewelry store. He got four years. I miss his partner, though. His partner? Big guy. I had him cornered, and he picked up this huge display case and threw it out a plate glass window. Then he vaulted out of there like something out of Barnum and Bailey. He got away. I would have had him, except for LeBlanc yelling, run for it, Willie. And you think he was an acrobat of some sort? More like a strong man, a wrestler, or a boxer, that kind of thing. Thanks. You've been a big help. You haven't done too badly yourself. You know the way. You can drive. Where are we going? You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Do we know where we're going? You're suggesting LeBlanc is still working with Willie? A strong man held down Randall while someone administered the morphine. Someone with muscle opened up LeBlanc's skull. Could be. Nice house. LAPD, ma'am. Is Mrs. Evestrom in? But she is. Would you follow me, sir? I am Mrs. Evestrom. How may I help you? We appear to have recovered some stolen goods that belong to you, ma'am. Yes, of course. That terrible burglary. Would you like something to drink? No, thank you, ma'am. We have some questions, if you don't mind. Why would I mind, young man? if you are returning 43 pieces of my property. Okay, before we get down to that, I'll have a scotch. Thanks, straight up. Maria, can you get the detective a drink, please? Can you describe to us what was stolen? It would be easier to describe what wasn't stolen, detective. <laughs> A priceless tiara that has been in the family for 50 years. A Fabergé cigarette case that was worth $25,000. Why are you lying about the value of your jewelry, Mrs. Evestrom? Who do you think you are, making heinous accusations in my own home? Young man, you are being quite diabolically rude. If that's all, I would like you out of this house. What can you tell us about the burglary? That terrible night, at least a year ago. But let's not go into that. Let's talk about what you've recovered. Were you in the house when the burglary took place? Good heavens, no. I was at a social function held by a Dr. Harold Stoneman and his lovely wife. I returned home and all of my things were missing. That's about it for now, Mrs. Eastrom. The department will get in touch and let you know how you can recover your valuables. You have only mentioned a few of the items that have been stolen, Detective. What else has been recovered? You see, Phelps, that's why you get the drinks in early. Hello, Mother. Hello, detectives. What is going on? We'd like to ask exactly the same question. You have met my daughter? This morning at work. Oh, mother and father divorced. I took my father's name. The detectives recovered some of the things that were stolen, Don. Well, what did you find? A sapphire ring on the corpse of Julia Randall. What are you talking about? Your engagement ring, Miss Swanson. Would you be surprised to know that it was part of the proceeds of a burglary? It's an outrageous allegation. Yes, it is. I suggest we go straight to Henry Arnett's place and sort this mess out.
We're missing something here. Arnett is obviously arranging the burglaries. That's my fiance you're making scurrilous accusations about. And Randall was obviously his partner. But neither of them are the type to creep apartments. You're being ridiculous, both of you. There's, there's a very good explanation for all of this. What a sock in it, sister. You're being played for a patsy and you're not even smart enough to see it. Look where you're going! Are we undercover now? Put the siren on! Are you trying to mow them down? Phelps! Thanks for your trouble. Come on, sister. Let's find out who your fiancé really is. Welcome, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, are you a resident? Well, isn't this just nice and awkward? Case. Go on, get Put out. your hands in the air! Give it up! LAPD!
Looks like he got you good, Phelps. Yeah, he really packs a wallop. How did I get back here? Under your own steam, miraculously. You came in through the window, said hello, and then keeled over. How was our net? He's coming around, too. He's all hopped up. Good time to get some answers. You missing something, Henry? You told Heather you're hunting mooning without her? We know all about the jewelry ring. You and Randall and the Blanc and Willie doing the legwork. I'm in the fashion business. You're lying, Henry. How can you prove that I'm involved, detective? Because you pawned a Fabergé cigarette case today for $600, a case that is on a list of stolen items. It was Julia's idea. Get a list of society parties and find out where and when and then have the guests burgled. Julia was desperate for money. No matter how much we made, she always wanted more. Why did Reed and LeBlanc kill Julia Randall? I, I wanted to stop, to, to get out of that life. I was gonna marry Heather if she'd have me. Julia told the others that, that they were out, that she was gonna create a, a new gang. You're lying, Arnett. I think you ordered them to kill her. It was made to look like suicide, and when the coroner saw through that, you knew it was time to run. I told you I was involved in the burglaries. I had nothing to do with Julia's death. Why would I need to run? Have you told Miss Swanson that you're leaving for Mexico City tomorrow night? That it's a one-way ticket? Henry? Tell me it isn't true. I had no choice. I wanted to marry Heather. I told Julia I wanted out, and she laughed in my face. I had to pay Willie and Jimmy a fortune to do her, and now I'm completely broke. What you are, Buster, is under arrest. Who is Henderson, and what is his involvement? Tell them what you know, Henry. I'll stand by you if you'll only tell the truth. There is no Henderson. Tell me about your first burglary, and don't lie. I can't remember. I don't keep a list of these things. Your first burglary was a Dr. Harold Stoneman. Do you want to explain how he is involved, or shall I? Henderson is Stoneman. He was crazy about Julia. She could get him to do whatever she wished. He threw the parties, and we arranged the burglaries. Julia never let him touch her. She just kept him hanging on the promise. Drove the good doctor almost insane. Henry Arnett, you are under arrest for burglary and for the murder of Julia Randall. Henderson is Stoneman, all right? I'm not the guy you want. Go talk to the good doctor. Oh, we will, knucklehead. Meanwhile, we're fitting you for convict stripes. You can drive. Where are we going? I guess the wedding's off. He only robbed her mother and killed her best friend. Cut the guy some slack. So how does the doctor fit in? That's what we're about to find out. Maybe we should ask him to give you a quick once-over. That meathead gave you one hell of a pasting. I've had worse. 
You should have seen yourself staggering back in there like a drunken sailor. Next time you can take the runner, Roy. I didn't box in the Marines, though, did I? I should have never told you that. for the doctor to give us something to make this all better. Hang on a moment, sister. Tell him it's Henry Arnett, and tell him it's urgent. I can't do that. Tell him, or I'll charge you with obstruction of justice. Doctor, I'm afraid Mr. Arnett is here to see you, and he says it's urgent. Send him in. I told you never to come. Tell us the truth, Doctor. I'm so glad you came. Prison will be better than insanity, and I'm already half insane with grief. Do you know that I loved her? I ruined my life for her, and yet I still love her. Will you testify in court that Arnett and Randall did these robberies? They organized the robberies. Julie would get the names of the guests attending my wife's parties. Didn't matter how much money I showered upon her, it was never enough. She never really cared for me. Doctor, I'm afraid you're under arrest. Oh, the practice. You'll call Dr. Gerard. No, 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 no. Please don't cry. I want to see no one. Not my wife or my children, nor my friends. And I don't want a lawyer. Just lock me up and throw away the key. What have I done? Didn't see that coming. <laughs> Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. I need an ambulance on the coroner immediately to the offices of Dr. Harold Stoneman, 1646 Ivor Street, Hollywood. En route, Detective. You have a message. Detective Bukowski says the suspect is named Wilson Willie the Wolf Reed, former wrestler. Last known address is an apartment building at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. Detective Bukowski says to meet them there. On our way. We have an address for the runner. Let's try and wrap this up, then. That old boy really fell for that bra. She was incredibly beautiful, boy. Would you throw it all away for a woman? Life has a way of making you pay for your pride. You're quite the romantic, Phelps. Stick with the percentages. Broken hearts are for chumps. You're talking from experience. I certainly am. Oh, I like women as much as the next guy. As long as they're in their place and doing what they're told. You're behind the wheel. Fine, where are we headed?
He's around here somewhere, a big guy. Neighbors say he always wears basketball shoes and a cream jacket. And get this, the kids around here say he plays the harmonica. Find the game well and have the commander set up a dragnet. We want the area closed off. We'll take this out of the street. A harmonica playing wrestler. That's a weird one. Think he knits as well? Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. We don't want him to bolt on us. Wilson Reed, LAPD, give yourself up. Hold it. He's got to be around here somewhere. No place to go unless you grew wings. There he is. Wait, the son of a bitch. Son of a bitch really picked a spot for it up here, didn't he? Julia Randall's folks are flying in from New York tomorrow to claim the body. I saw her on the slab. So perfect. Looked like she was made of porcelain. She really made an impression on me. Julia had that impact on a lot of men. Christ, it's cold. You guys did good work here today. Roy! I think you should buy your brother officers a drink. Do you now? That's very generous of you, Lieutenant. It's over, Cole. Looks like you're one of the lucky ones. Goodbye to your friend Hank, Jack.
It's your friend too, Cole. Is this how you're going to leave him? Are you wounded? Not a scratch, Carlson. Well, get up and get out of that fucking hole! Find a stretcher while you're at it so we can get him out of here! Who's the senior officer here? I guess that's you, Cole. You were up here all night? Yes, sir. And your command? Gone, sir. Sorry to hear that, son. God damn it, we have beaten these bastards back. It's the beginning of the end, and it was one here. You're a goddamn hero, son. What's your name? Lieutenant Phelps, sir. I'm recommending you for the Silver Star and promoting you to first lieutenant. Earl Phelps, a shooting at the 111 Club, 6232 Hollywood Boulevard. Sounds like a homicide beef. Two of the dead guys caught in the crossfire were carrying army surplus morphine. Get over there before homicide tramples all over the place. We already cleared that up. Judge in Pasadena took the big sleep yesterday. He had a personal stash of 20 cigarettes. Appears we didn't get all of it. Alrighty, till next time on LA Dawn.